Every Necromancer build needs minions in Season 4. Especially Shadow Necromancer gets so much stronger. This is a tier 180 plus pin. Almost at 200, the hardest pit possible. And we're just blasting through it. Why is Shadow working so good with minions though? That has two reasons. The new scale to mages now boost our whole damage by 15% multiplicative if they exist. And they do shadow damage. So if I hire my shadow damage with tempering, paragon board, and aspects, the shadow damage of my mages gets increased too. So you can finally directly influence the damage of your mages and every single piece of equipment, helmet, chest, pants, gloves, boots, can have a plus to skeletal mage mastery. And every rank point plus is 20% multiplicative damage. So instead of three out of three ranks, you can easily get 12 out of three, if not 15 out of three ranks, which leads to over 200% damage multiplier on all the other damage multiplier that you have. The gameplay loop is extreme. The gameplay loop is super fun because we're playing this undying. That means we can blood mist in, curse the enemy, pull them together with corpse tendrils, and then just keep blood misting inside the opponents while our minions are destroying everything. Corpse explosions happen automatically because of the Ring of Sacrilegious Souls, or we can just stand on the sidelines in Corpse Explosion, and if anything would actually kill us or be any danger to us, we can just Blood Mist. This works perfectly in the boss fights, because in the boss fights, whenever the boss acros are coming to kill you, you just Blood Mist. Then reduce your cooldown again, Blood Mist. <laughs> and while your minions are doing millions, millions, and millions of damage, simple perfection. Skill tree first because there were interesting changes. We put the first two points in Reap and Enhanced Reap. And then we're going for Blight. And Blight is going to give us Supernatural Blight for that 20x multiplier to you and your minions. More damage for everyone. Then still making corpses with Hood Flash. And putting all the points into Corpse Explosion with a Blighted Corpse Explosion. Why that? Because end of the day, yes, your minions are doing the main damage. And we're boosting minions to the max. But we need to do Corpse Explosions to have them do more damage anyways for the 40% damage multiplier and the blighted aspect. So why not add our damage to their damage to together do the most damage possible? Blood Mist with Ghastly Blood Mist for the bonus corpses. One single rank and spiked armor for a little bit of thorns, but also the 5% more armor. And then we're boosting the scale to warriors and three points in Grim Harvest because we need the six essence per corpse to always have enough essence to also spam the blight. That brings us into the movement speed with the curse damage and the cooldown reduction on the Crapify. And as you can see here right now, I only have eight ranks in Skeletal Mage Mastery, but that's already a 160% multiplier. Every bonus rank is a 20% more multiplier, and I'm missing it on my chest currently and on my pants, which is another six ranks possible. And we're not even talking about getting it as a greater affix, because if you get it at a greater affix, it's basically Base plus four already. Corpse tendrils into the vulnerable corpse tendrils and then one point into Reaper's Pursuit. Technically, you could put the armor point up there for thorns into even more Reaper's Pursuit. Interesting, Crippling Darkness now does damage, so you can stun people with darkness skills as you could, but there's a damage that can also scale higher and crit. With the bonus damage from Gloom, that boosts your Shadow Mage damage, and Terror boosts your Shadow Mage damage as well, and your damage. Now, interesting down here, no points into Bonded Essence, because useless, your minions heal enough. And then no points into death defense, since death defense is now useless. This skill makes no sense. Minions are getting 100% of your stats. So that means they get 100% of your resistance and your armor. They already have 17,000 armor. Why would I give them more armor than that? They are at the absolute armor cap already. Over armor makes no sense. So death defense and no build, but still the bonus crit on inspiring leader and the bonus damage from Hellbang Commander is what you definitely want. Then we're not playing Kalan's Addict. What? Yes, because we have reached 100% attack speed bonus without. And that is what you want. You want the 100% attack speed bonus for Cold Leader for the 150% damage multiplier. And if you can reach that without Kalan's Addict, we can play the Shadow Blight key passive for more damage. This Shadow Blight key passive does get stacked up by your shadow minions. 
and it does more damage with your shadow damage over time, so it doesn't hurt to have. Now to the gear, and it's so interesting. First, the weapon, and we have a couple of choices. You can play a one for the lucky hit, the sword for the bonus crit, or even a dagger for the damage to close enemies. But one and sword is probably better. You want the bonus attack speed here. Very important. Your attack speed is your minion's attack speed too. So they're getting double boosted. Critical strike damage, a must. And then we're getting to the temperings. Currently, I have the elemental search on for up to a 40% chance to deal 40,000 shadow damage. I don't actually want that, but I don't have any more tempered durability. What I would rather want is the summoning augments. And here we're talking about chance for skeleton mage attacks to cast twice or minion attack speed if you need. But I'd rather have the double skeleton mage attacking because more attacks is going to work with Mendel. And we're going to talk about Mendel in a second. Vastly better. And that can go on your offhand too. Yes. So you have the chance on the offhand and on the main hand, which gives you a 40% total. And if you master work it, up to 50, 60% total for the double cast. Now you could go for the chance for your blight projectiles to cast twice as well. That would be more shadow damage, more chance for the blighted aspect that we have on because we're playing the blighted aspect for the 120% bonus damage. And that 120 bonus damage multiplier goes straight over to your minions. So they get more Mandel damage, but they themselves also just get simply more damage. And then you get your offensive augment. And here you have two choices. Either you could increase your skeletal mage damage or your summoning damage. That would straight up make your skeletal mage stronger. Alternative, you could go for shadow finesse and increase darkness damage. Now, darkness damage would kind of be increasing all shadow damage. So everything you do and the mages. Technically, you could go for corpse explosion as well. The skeletal mage damage here is the biggest plus you can get. So this can go on your gloves. This can go on your amulet. This can go on your wand. And this can go on your offhand as well. Technically, you could just go for an overall damage plus because an all damage plus goes to you and your minions as well. It's a question of do you want to max out or hybridize your damage? Technically, max out is going to be the best because of that skeletal mage mastery multiplier. And that's where we're looking at the boots right now. Yes, plus two to skeletal mage mastery. That's the absolute base. This can go up naturally plus three. And if it's getting master work plus four, if you get greater affix up to plus six. Then you can temper for movement speed and corpse explosion size or corpse tendril size. Both are quite amazing to either pull together the whole room or damage the whole room. I really do like the corpse tendril size. Then your skeletal priest heals yourself now, me as the player, and it gives me the damage multiplier too. I get the damage multiplier, then the ring of Mendel is getting the damage multiplier as well. That is double trouble. Now we're using a unique pants because I'm not having a bone storm. And this temerity is quite fun because it gives maximum life, potion drop rate, healing received. But if I heal myself over 100%, I get a barrier and that barrier can go up to 80%. I will have with all the gems in and everything correctly taken, all the maximum lives, maximum life, around 30,000 life. And then with an 80% barrier, that's another 25,000 barrier. And how do you overheal? Well, that's simple with a skeletal priest. I use the skeletal priest, it heals for eight seconds and it overheals me consistently to get me consistently a barrier. Gloves can have a huge amount of critical strike damage and you want that. And then plus three to scale to mage mastery too. Here I currently have the corpse tendril size and the corpse explosion damage that could then be the scale to mage damage. Critical strike chance is not to be laughed at as well. You deal 47% increased shadow damage to enemies afflicted by any curse. Yes, that is the new 50% multiplier. Just like that. Done. Any curse, your crap of fire, Iron Maiden, huge amount of bonus damage. My chest is currently having plus five to corpse explosion. Yes, just like that. Means if I would have skeletal mage mastery, I could have that plus five as well. Maximum master worked item plus three skeletal mage mastery would end up to be plus five on the boots plus five too. That would be 10 more ranks. That's 200% more damage. You can go for total armor here and corpse tendril size. And the best part, 25% damage reduction for you and your minions, just like that. I tried putting this away to try some other aspects, but the damage reduction is just too powerful. Unless we're getting damage reduction on gear again or damage reduction tempering, I don't see me ever putting 
getting this off. On the helmet, we have the scale to mages and the warriors plus two now. Do not put this on your amulet, it's not worth it. You can have lucky hit chance on the helmet, or instead of lucky hit chance with the maximum life and the armor, we can have scale to mage mastery here too. So another plus five, that's boots plus five, helmet plus five, and chest plus five, 15 ranks. 20%, 300% damage multiplier for your mages. You see where we're going with this. It's so simple to scale up their damage. And the amulet has lastly, the aspect of the frenzy den. The aspect of the frenzy dead is needed to push our attack speed to that 100%. Technically, right now I'm actually overshooting. I'm currently at 110, 115%. So the frenzy dead could go on my weapon and the blighted aspect for the damage multiplier could go on the amulet to make it higher. Now resource tempering is kind of useless for this necromancer build, but I still had it on because of the masterwork 38% total armor. So instead of a resource tempering, you'd rather go for defensive mobility or utility. Whatever you feel here, like bonus curse duration or size of the corpse tendrils again, you can make yourself a bit faster or have your movement speed increase during blood mist. Yep, that works as well. Or end of the day, any resistance, maximum life, total armor, blight, slow potency, or crippling darkness rings, because yes, you can get the crippling darkness skill bonus rings to get more damage on the stuns and longer stuns. One ring is sacrilegious souls. It's a little bit of a no-brainer. That's corpse skills, works great, and you can master work that. And you get free tendrils, free explosions, and free ray skeletons. With this item, you never have to worry again raising your skeletons or even using the skeletal priest, because that happens automatically, and you can fully focus on throwing blights, doing more corpse tendrils, and doing more corpse explosions. Fully focus on that, and the rest is taken care of. Then we're playing the Ring of Mendel, and it's an absolute no-brainer over Ixfeld's Corroded Signet. Yes, Ixfeld could do a lot of shadow damage with your shadow damage over time, but Ring of Mendel gives us minion attack speed, and every sixth attack, we do 24,000 damage that can critical strike and go crazy. Yes, this is physical damage, but luckily the Blighted Aspect boosts all damage, and our Paragon board also does all damage multipliers. The thing is, is, this stuff is happening always every sixth attack and with the bonus attacks on your skeletal mages now when they cast twice it's happening even sooner because if your skeletal mages are hitting now and every second attack is doubled so that means he says one attack then two attacks then one attack then two attacks then one attack then two attacks then one attack then two attacks, then one attack, then two right that's not every sixth attack anymore that's just way more often and it doesn't need lucky hit or anything to trigger it just simply triggers the ring of mandel actually needs a rework because it currently has maximum minion life on it and maximum minion life is useless your minions already have maximum life from you and maximum armor from you so this stat makes no sense anymore and should be maximum minion damage instead lastly on our offhand we're having the corpse tendrils happening and they get buffed to a 50 percent multiplier on critical strike damage and this currently doesn't work on your minions it works on yourself and the ring of mandel and it will probably work on minions as it gets fixed you can have critical strike chance lucky hit chance on here cooldown reduction if you want to have your blood mist even more but you should usually have that and yes again the scale to mage temper for the bonus double attacks I touched on the Paragon board. Let's look at it. We first start with a shadow damage on darkness. Why? I told you. Bonus shadow damage buffs minions as well. And it's a 10% damage reduction from enemies affected by our shadow damage. So that's actually kind of cool. But this shadow damage doesn't only boost our minions. It also boosts all my damage. So it's a double double. That gets into the flesh eater board. And we need to take the poison resistance down here to be fully resistance out. Critical strike damage because our minions critical strike. No our damage over time can critical strike. But our ring of Mandel our crippling darkness and our shadow blight can create that goes then into amplify for the bonus curse damage we're not playing corporal here that would give us bonus movement speed but it only boosts physical damage whereas amplify boosts any kind of damage if the enemy is cursed over to the cult leader board for the 150 percent damage multiplier in our minions together with a bonus attack speed and the bonus scale to mage damage and yes the resistance to all elements that is in this note is also useless because our minions are already maximum resistance now we do have the debt razor glyph because that's a 15 percent damage multiplier just way too good to not have into the wither board and since we're already doing damage over time things and the damage over time can then bonus damage why not take wither and here we're boosting our shadow damage shadow damage to shadow damage affected enemies shadow damage and a little bit of shadow resistance that we're actually fully resistance out lastly we're going to the send of death board for the bonus critical strikes and here with the essence glyph for critical strike damage and that 22 percent super increase multiplier that works on our minions as well making them even stronger plus bonus armor because you need a lot of armor 
Lastly, Book of the Dead. Currently playing Skeletal Reapers for the bonus corpses, and our mages are going for that 3% damage multiplier for each active Shadow Mage. And I do personally wish that Golem would give us this 30% critical strike damage as he was there, because right now this is too good to still not take. The Golem itself is just simply not worth it in comparison. Blood Mist keeps me permanently alive, while the Golem might make me unstoppable, but he can't prevent any damage taken by me. Sure, yes, the Blood Golem with a 30% damage reduction, but what does 30% damage reduction use you if there's a random one hit happening? Whereas with Blood Mist, you can just avoid getting hit at all, so you can't actually die. And we're simply flying to tier 200 right now without worrying about ever catching a bullet. Tormented bosses are falling, everything is getting destroyed. How are you liking the Shadow Summoner? Does it look interesting to you? Or are you rather in the Boom God department? This one is going to get an update too, where we replace the Golem through Blood Mist. If you want to give that a twirl, enjoy. Thanks for watching.